That is, after all, what we all want to know. Oh yeah, it handles it. <laughs> oh, that's so much better than my old laptop. Assassin... Kerinsky's been assassinated? What? Kerinsky has just been shot and killed while on his way to the Senate. The assailant was taken down by the police, but the goals and the intentions of the attacker were unknown. How barbaric. Absolutely shocking. So we got Kaiser Reich with the Rota 56 tech tree. Yeah, we do. Kerinsky. No! Edward VIII, crowned as King of Great Britain, George V, the last King of Great Britain and Ireland to rule the Home Isles themselves, has passed while in exile in Canada. The first Windsor's King's reign shall be remembered with sorrow and sadness, as during it Britain lost both the Welsh Creek and its homeland. Mussolini, Valois, Herzog and other interested parties arrived in Birmingham today to discuss their common ground. It's been agreed that maximalism, Sorellianism and national syndicalism all share the same basic principles in the state's primacy and the socialist struggle. The role of national identity with the state and the importance of a strong central authority to preserve and build socialism. Namtakor coming in with a 15 month reset. Thank you very much for that, Namtakor. Very much appreciate that. We're out of oil. Um, oh, geez. How did you all get damaged? Is that what lack of oil does? That's kind of cool if it is. Certainly looks like it, doesn't it? They all had about 98% damage. Huh. Oh, and I just clicked through. Mein Gott! Black Monday happened, everyone. The Fifth Anglo-Afghani War after the Welsh Creek, as the British Raj collapsed into turmoil and warfare, the neighbouring kingdom of Afghanistan took advantage of this as an opportunity to seize Peshawar and Quetta. The Travaille elected in... France. The Commune of France has the world's leading syndicalist nation, united as a federation of city communes and directed by the Comité de Salut Public, the primary executive. Not too long, we're good. So we can do the agricultural reforms, which will give us monthly population max factories, uh, popularity of social conservatives, or civilian factory construction to be in dockyard construction. I'm not actually doing those at the moment. So I think I'm going to start with the population buff from the agricultural reforms. As we continue modernizing Sweden, we must ensure that nobody is left behind. While urban industry is vital to our success, rural farms and towns are important as well. We shall touch up some of our laws to assist them and have some investments too. Is this just from the air planes? Yes. Huh. The Shangqing Chang'o declared. Governor Zhang Chongchang has uh, known throughout China as the dog meat general is dead. Reports coming out from the Jinan out of Jinan allege that Zhongshan and his top lieutenant Sun Jianjing was attempting to storm the sacred Taishan earlier this week and did not survive the assault. That didn't go well. The Austrian Empire withdraws from Italy. It is clear that Black Monday has hit the Austrian Empire hard. The Austro-Hungarian Reichs Minister today announced that he was recalling divisions stationed in Italian territory. Poland declares a republic. After several high-profile terror attacks in Poland and the near-total collapse of their economy, a large group of high-ranking Polish officials have released a statement declaring the creation of a new Polish republic. Music's a bit loud. So what I'll do is I'll turn it up on my own headset and turn it down for you guys. How is that? Any better.
is, is still the only streamer that can pronounce them to call correctly. I'm glad. <laughs> Alright, so we could bring in a theorist if we wanted to. The illusion of Qing hegemony shatters. The facade of Chinese unity, having held together for nearly a decade, has begun to crumble. Rising unrest in the League of Eight Provinces, the economic shock of Black Monday, pretending, portending German retrenchment, and the inability of the national government to deliver a decisive response to either has made one thing clear. Beijing's monopoly on power is over. Hanjing Chi clique declared war on Nanjing. League of Eight Provinces declared war on the left Kuomintang. Marshal Wu Weifu backs Nanjing. Oh, that's good. Following the death of Marshal Sun Chun Fang earlier this year and the subsequent collapse of Qing authority over much of China, few expected the Imperial Minister of the Army Wu Weifu, the real power behind the throne in Beijing, to take overt military action. Chanjing Chang'e declared war on Nanjing. That's not good. Oh dear, that's, that's really not good. Black Monday arrives in Sweden. Here we go. Two weeks ago, the German stock markets imploded and now the waves have come crashing on our shores as the first of the Stockholm's Borsen followed the fate that played out of Berlin and soon after the rest of the economies followed suit. Since the World's Creek, Sweden has become highly dependent on German trade, joining its organisation of Middle Europa together with Denmark. As such, our trade relations have become increasingly one-sided, being aimed at the countries in the tariff-free zone. Germany, Denmark and the German puppet states in the Baltic coast at the cost of their trading partners such as Norway and Great Britain, with whom trading is subject to tariffs, or in the latter case, even embargoes. <coughs> the Central Rada seizes power in White Ruthenia, with Germany's economy shaken by a severe economic crisis. The repercussions were quickly felt in the European hegemon's eastern satellites. White Ruthenia, a small and young nation by the Russian border, was soon rocked by instability after growing agitation from the radical leftist elements of the country. The army intervened and deposed the elected Social Democratic government. Another democracy falls. Nanjing dead already. That was quick. Looks like Anqing might win this one. Left Kuomintang declared for Anqing. Anqing declared for Anqing Chang'e. So now this is the three-way war. And there's the agricultural reforms, restoration of democracy in Australasia. The Australasian Confederation has been under the authoritarian rule of Governor General William Birdwood since the British invocation of the Emergency Protocols in 1924. Mosley elected as the chairman of the TUC, the 1936 Trade Union Congress in the Union of Britain was made out to be decisive. Longtime chairman of the TUC, Philip Snowden, declared his resignation, causing the four major factions of the Union, the Maximus, the Autonomous, the Federationalists, and Congregationalists to butt heads over the position. The Social Democrats do not have a monopoly on charity. We must use our position to work towards the betterment of our citizens, especially as economic downturn and a decisive upcoming election seek to tear the intricately woven social fabric. We must ensure the safety and well-being of our citizens. Before I do that, though... Um, one thing I wanted to double check is do we have any Black Monday stuff? We do here. Let's actually do this one. Sweden was plunged into economic crisis due to our attachment to the Middle European economic bloc. The Riksdag has developed a plan to save our economy by making sweeping economic changes. At least then we can start on those. The death of Pius XI. All of Christendom mourns as the death of His Holiness, Pope Pius XI, who died following a heart attack, having been in declining health for several years, something which rapidly worsened following Black Monday. How terrible. Gallo seizes control of Ecuador. Seemingly unwilling to stand by and watch as the relatively liberal government under Ayora's PLRE won the recent election and risks enfeebling Ecuador, Alberto Enrico Gallo launched a successful putsch in Quito. Having already dissolved the administration, created a new council of military advisers, the new military strongman has quickly begun embarking on a quest to purify Ecuador of alleged threats and opponents. The KMT and Indian socialists overthrow Tibet. To most newspapers, news from Tibet is treated as a fanciful story of little consequence to geopolitics, only relevant to fellow Buddhists scattered throughout China. 
However, the modern world has recently entered Tibet in the ideology of Sun Yat-sen, toppling the regent and installing the radical ideologue of the Ninth Panchen Lama. So, Tibet's now what, socialist? <laughs> <coughs> I'm going to need to go and make some new tea, I think, soon. In fact, yeah, I am. I, I do need to be careful with my throat. Like on, when was it? Saturday, I could barely talk. The fact that it's recovered as much as it has now is kind of a thing. All right, so that is now boiling. I'm going to just keep an ear out for it as we continue. Oh, I just love the fact that time actually moves so quickly now. <laughs> it makes such a big difference. And I'm purposely banking political power because I feel like I'm going to need it for decisions. Delegates from the socialist nations and political movements around the world gathered in Paris today for the latest in a series of world congresses. While the mantle of the Third International was taken up by the common arts after the Russians of war, the ideological tenor of the event promises to be very different. Although we could bring in an industrial concern. Eh. That would by far and away be the best, so we would need the LKAB. Pius XII, elected the new Pope, Catholic faithful in Rome, breathed a sigh of relief as the Sistine Chapel's chimney billowed forth white smoke, signifying the election of a new Pope. <clears throat> Battle Pope? Battle Pope. And there it is, the 1936 Crisis Act. So we can have the Buring Commission, which will give us more electronics and decryption. Or the Royal Institute of Technology, which will give us research speed and a bonus to industry. Um, I think we probably want to do that after we've got you. So instead, we're going to continue to address the people's pleas. Which we already read previously. Famine breaks out in Sichuan. The province of Sichuan has long struggled with a famine. Rocky terrain and unpredictable weather kept populations low until the early Qing era, when widespread land clearances and immigration incentives brought uh, hordes of peasants to the province. In 1925, a lengthy drought turned into a devastating famine that ravaged the province, leading to hundreds of thousands of deaths and millions of refugees. Right, decisions. Response to Black Monday, the Swedish economy is tightly connected to the German one, and as such, the economic downturn in Berlin has found its way to the purpose of the average Swede. Purses of the average Swede. As such, the Prime Minister has appointed the Crisis Commission under the Minister of Finance to prevent Sweden from ailing away under the effects. With unemployment rising and tax returns shrinking, this will surely be a daunting task, however. So we currently have 4 million kroner. Inflation is zero, unemployment 30, and we have no debt. So we can drop the gold standard which will allow us to print more money. We can increase interest. We can borrow money. We can cut military spending. We can raise taxes. That seems like a very Swedish thing to do. We can cut welfare spending. We can start a public works program. Oh, this one drops unemployment. That's usually a good thing. Subsidize raw materials. That also drops unemployment. Nationalize a major company. <coughs> Implement tariffs. However, this will mean that we leave Middle Europa. 
and then wrap up the crisis commission. Inflation below 8, less than 10 million krona of related debt, stability goes up, and the decisions and mechanics of solving Black Monday will be disabled. <coughs> Well, I'm usually a big fan of public work programs. In the short term, it will cost us all the consumer goods, but at the moment we're in Black Monday. Consumer goods means nothing. Hey, Tom Passos, how are you doing? Good to see you. What's the thing next to political power and stability? Uh, party power. I live in a European town that had pirates to, for the same reason as Sichuan during the Napoleonic War. Huh. Oh! Oh! Pirates! 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 E4! Has this been announced? Penny Shrine has. <laughs> I need to be so careful about these things. Hang on, let me just look something up. E4 Dev Diary. Yeah, it has been announced. So, Gotland. You can play as a Pirate Republic in Gotland. Yay! <laughs> and I, I really need to read the uh, the Lubeck Dev Diary, actually. I have not done so yet. I was not expecting them to rework Lubeck. Because Lubeck was already in a really good position with the last expansion, so I'm surprised they, they did it again. <clears throat> My Man Patrician 3, Part 2, Visby Boogaloo. Heck yeah. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start this public works program. It'll cost me three of the four million krona that I had in the bank, but I think it's gonna be a good start. Also, this kind of surprisingly didn't actually cost me any political power. Consumer goods factory is minus three. Production efficiency cap plus 10. Wow, he's good. So is he. Stability and research. So is he. What the hell, Sweden? Why are your people so... Oh, Sweden's not overpowered. Construction speed and political power. Max planning. <laughs> ah! There's too many of them. They're all good. Consumer goods down, fuel gain... Per oil up, fuel capacity up. And we cannot get rid of Gosta Bag. Is he the Prime Minister? I think he is. Probably wait to pick ministers until you know which ideology we're going. Some are locked, certain ones. Yeah, those are mostly the extremist ones oh no they're not oh not authoritarian democrat paternal autocrat or national populist authoritarian democrat oh auth dem right yeah and some of these they must be a social conservative interesting well, I could go to early mobilization. There's nothing stopping me. As long as we keep our war support over 15, which I think we can do. It gives me five of my consumer goods factories back. Ooh, what are these? Oh, these are new. Huh. So we can have individual rights, which gives stability, loses ideology drifts, damage to garrisons, and compli increases compliance. That's really good. Increases stability, increases ideology drift, increases damage to garrisons. Personality cult, secular institutions, research speed, war support, or supply consumption. Uh, less female operatives, more factory output, more production efficiency cap, less recruitable 
uh, factor. Weekly manpower. Recruitable population. However, factory output goes down. Much higher chance of having female operatives. Enforced patriarchy. Much more factory output. And then total equality, much less. Social order. The only one we can do is revolutionary mines, which drop stability but increases research rate. Rocket sites and nuclear reactors. For the greater good. 125% population. What? Oh, that costs 200. And 15% infrastructure construction. Hmm. Command power, military factory and dockyards. And then we've got ideological struggle, struggle which is mobilization, defense, and justification of brinksmanship. I'm really tempted to try and get melting pot. That sounds amazing. Especially for the way that I play. I don't know what you're talking about. It's just realistically what Swedes are like. Confirmed. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm going to wait for the, the 200 political power. Although... This is always a fun of melting pot. As long as we're not paternal autocrat or national populist, which I don't think Sweden can go. I think we can only... Go oh, no, maybe not. Ah, paternal autocracy, authoritarian democracy, national populist. So yes, we absolutely could go that way. Alright, I'm not going to choose immediately. I'll just sit on the political power for now. <clears throat> More research speed, sounds amazing. I remember a time long forgotten when Kaiserreich Scandinavia would just sit on their ass with Norway occasionally suiciding by attacking Sweden. I remember that too. The five year commemoration of Orderlen. In May 1931, a large march of strikers marched towards the barracks of the Blacklegs who were working at the local factories. The police had called in the military for support, and before the day was over, the riots had ended in five strikers being killed by military fire. Ever since then, the yearly marches are held in memory of the dead workers among the socialists, although conservatives claim the workers were armed and attacked them first. The strikes of this year are unusually large. What should we do? And you know what? This is going to be a question for you, chat. What should we do about this? I'm pressing the wrong thing for the question mark. So we let them... They'll tire. Or we say, wasn't want enough. Send in the military! This is going to be a one minute vote. Get your votes in. And while that's happening, I'm going to go and get my tea. So, um, go on, get. Get your votes in. Back in a minute. Perfectly timed. Okay, so tea supplies have been replenished. And Riverboat contributed 100 bits. Thank you very much for that. Bionic Arm contributed 6,000 channel points. Thank you also very much for that too. So, Send in the Military came in last by only 2%. 49% to 51. So people were feeling a little bit gung-ho. But we're just going to let them tire out. 
<clears throat> and sending in the military would have cost political power. Though I don't usually tell you what they do, because that's half the fun. Per Alban Hanson criticizes our crisis response. Per Alban Hanson, leader of the Sverges Socialdemokrista Arbeitspartei, the SAP, and widely considered to be the foremost leader of the opposition, has sharply condemned the bugger cabinet's response to the ongoing economic upheaval, calling their faith in non-intervention dangerous and damaging to Sweden. He once again has called in the favour of his own Folkhamet programme that he claims will actually protect those who have lost their jobs in the crisis originating in Germany. Social democracy goes up, social conservatism goes down. Speaking of which, we should also keep an eye on these. Um... So we could print extra money, which will increase inflation. We can cut the military spending straight away, which will give us 5 million kroner. And that lasts for a year. I'm not cutting welfare spending, because that is a huge stability and monthly population debuff. Uh, with the money that we've saved, we now have 6 million in the bank again. We could subsidize raw resource exporting, which again, lowers unemployment. And then we could also drop the gold standard, which will allow us to print extra money, which again, inflation, if we need it. Or we could do the consumer goods factories and political power cost in order to gain extra money. You know what, let's raise taxes, then we have the extra money to play with if we need it. <coughs> I feel like I can get the aircraft training again. With what little tiny bit of oil I have left. <laughs> Yay, they leveled up. Rising SSV membership, although the opposition is clearly led by the SAP, two smaller socialist parties are active as well. The Sveriges Socialdemokratista Vontas Partei, the SSV, which would identify as radical socialists who are strongly in favour of the cause of the so-called Third International, and the Vonta Partiet Totaltisterna, the VPT, which partakes this year for the first time in the Swedish elections. Especially the former party is seeing a sharp increase in the membership over the years as the social democratic failure to dethrone the perpetual conservative government causes radicalization amongst its ranks. That's right, divide yourselves. <clears throat> Reduce unemployment from 30% to 25 in four months, not going to lie, is kind of impressive. Of course it is, it's just the kind of leader I am. <laughs> Okay, so now we can reassure big business, which will give us the civilian factory and dockyard construction. So let's go ahead and do that just to keep those aligned. <clears throat> 